my church in Atlanta, St. Paul Worship Center. <laughs> I spent the last 12 years of my life in that church. Um, I went in there as a lay person and left out of there ordained. At that time, um, I left as an ordained deacon. And I was in the choir. And it was a running joke with our minister of music. <laughs> he used to always say it was um, all of us could sing, but it was just, you know, he knew that three of us had the strongest voices. And we kind of carried the soprano section. And he would say, now, Val, Vanita, and Bridget, all y'all can't fall out at the same time. <laughs> we would get happy, y'all. And we would forget we would sing. I mean, it's like the spirit would hit us and we would go down like dominoes, one after the other. <laughs> I remember one Sunday, all of all three of us were on the floor, passed out. The spirit had hit us, and he had but by two sopranos <laughs> sitting up there trying to carry the soprano section, and we were all passed out. So when the spirit hits you, hey, it hits you, and it just hit me sitting here at my dining room table. So you know, hey, I just praise God this morning for being a good God for being who he is and taking care of Bridget. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I am coming to you this morning from Psalm. We have read Psalm chapter 23 in our scriptural readings. But I am going to focus on verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now that's the New International Version. I'm going to go back to the King James Version, which I read earlier. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let the saints of God say, Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious Yahweh, Lord, I just thank you this morning for being a good God, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for being who you are, for waking us up this morning, God. We give you praise today, God. Lord, I just ask you to just send your Holy Spirit out to everybody that's on the conference line, to everybody that will see the video later. Lord, we just ask you this morning to touch us, God. Don't let us hang up today and be the same that we were when we joined on the conference line, God. You've been too good to us, God. You've been a good God, and we thank you, Lord. Our mouths should be filled with thanksgiving, God. Our spirits should be joyful this morning, God. So, Lord, I just ask you right now, each one of us have a concern. Each one of us have cares. But Lord, just help us to just put those cares on you today, God. We might need healing. We might need better jobs. Or we might need a job, a new home, a new car, financial um, blessings. Lord, we might need blessings when it comes to relationships, God. No matter how big or how small the issue is, we know that you are greater than the issue, God. So we thank you right now in advance for doing it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Who? thank you, Lord. Y'all, I'm sorry. If I get up and start dancing and running, y'all just, y'all just hold the line because um, I... I got a, a joy in my soul 
that some people not going to understand. Everybody not going to get it because see, some people want to want to hold on and focus only on the negative. She had COVID and almost died. So why is she so happy? You know why I'm happy? Because I'm still here. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. And I'm here to encourage you today. Yes, I went into the darkest valley. I went over to the other side and i'll get that testimony later is already on my youtube channel for those of you who who go on there and look at at the stuff that i post but i'm here to encourage you even when things and times get dark we have a god that is with us He's with us in the good times. See, everybody wants stuff to feel good. We love the good times. We love to give God praise when things are going good. Think about that time when you got that new car. Think about that time when you got that job that you had been praying for. Think about that time when God gave you that husband or wife or significant other that you had been waiting on and you were oh so in love. Think about that time when you prayed to get through a test that you knew you really didn't study for and God gave you the knowledge and you made an A. Think about a time when you were sick and you know it was God himself that touched you and healed your body. See, we love to praise God when it's good, when things are going good in our lives. Don't let us get hold to some extra money and our pockets are stuffed. We act like a fool. We strutting around with our chest out. We happy because we got some extra money. Thank you, Lord, for the extra money. But what about, like it says right here in Psalm 23, 4, when you are walking through your darkest valley. See, a valley means that you are as low as you can go. A valley is a decline from the top of a mountain or a hill. A valley is a trail that is sometimes there preformed and sometimes you got to make it a trail okay so what i mean by that is see sometimes we get into situations and we in a valley because we've chosen to do something counter to what god has told us to do so we put ourselves in a valley god told you to turn right but you went to the left anyway even in your disobedience, God is still with you. He still is merciful and he is full of grace to where he protects us when we make poor choices. Amen. See, they say God look out for children and fools. <laughs> I think all of us here have been a fool at some point in our life. We done done some stuff that we knew we weren't supposed to do. We were warned. We got the red flags. Sometimes we even literally got hit in the head. Y'all ever had that happen? I never forget. I was thinking something crazy one time and literally something hit me in my head. That was number God saying, God, get them thoughts out your head. Matter of fact, I still got the knot on my head right now. Having to put hydrocortisone cream on. I've been putting it on there for two months trying to get this knot off my head. I was out of my daddy's shop doing something, but I was thinking some crazy stuff while I was out there. I was thinking some stuff that wasn't holy and bloop just like that piece of wood fell and hit me in the top of my forehead see god will give you signs we ask for signs all the time but then we ignore them and we do what we want to do see sin is easy to slip into for satan is always there crouching waiting to devour any way he can to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants our souls. That's how you end up in these valleys because why? Satan and his demons want your soul. But we have the hope as children of the Most High that God is always with us when we get into these valley situations. All of us 
Every last one of us have had a valley situation. All of us, as long as we have breath in us, will have another valley situation. But the challenge is, how are you going to handle it? Are you going to whine and complain about it? Or are you going to say, I will fear no evil for you are with me. That's the hope that we have through Jesus Christ, that he is with us. So see, you have nothing to fear. Some of y'all right now, when y'all found out that your pastor had COVID, you got worried. Lord Jesus, if she got COVID and almost died and she, uh, I ain't going to say a righteous woman. We just going to say halfway righteous. Okay. Cause I'm struggling just like everybody else. I'm on the same spiritual journey. I just choose not to sin because I know the repercussions of sin, but it don't mean that I don't sin. Okay. All of us sin. Okay. I might not be out there doing stuff that other folks do, but I struggle in my mind, okay? I struggle in my mind just like everybody else. It's a constant warfare, amen? We have hope in knowing that God is with us. Some of y'all got fearful, said, I don't know if I want to go back to the church. I don't know if I want to be around anybody because if, if my pastor got COVID, Lord, I might get COVID too. Well, I'm here to encourage you. You can't worry about that. You are not to fear any evil. If you have God on your side, guess what? He's going to pull you through. He's not going to leave you. He didn't leave me when I was laying up in Jackson Hospital. He was right there with me the whole time. You can be standing in line at Walmart and be standing next to somebody that's got COVID or pneumonia or influenza or hepatitis or tuberculosis. You don't know what people have if the truth be told. You are walking out on faith every time you leave your home. But we get out there and we get anxious about stuff. We look at the news and we let that get in our spirit and it interrupts our peace. But I'm here to tell you this morning, if God is on your side, ain't no devil in hell, ain't no demon in hell, ain't no force of darkness can kill you if God says, do not lay a hand on that person. God is with you. You have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. You are going to go through hard times. I'm going to go through hard times. Who are we to accept the good, but not want to accept the bad? If God sent his son, Jesus, which was a part of himself, down to the earth to suffer and be crucified for us. Who are we? Think about that for a minute. Who are we to expect for life to be perfect all the time? But we know through Jesus Christ that we have a protector. We have a great comforter. We have somebody that loves us unconditionally and somebody that will never, ever leave us. I don't care what it looks like around you. I don't care how low you may be. God is there with you. He's not going to leave you. You may feel alone. But I'm telling you, when you're in these valid situations, when you're feeling low and you're feeling by yourself, if you would just pray, if you would just ask God to come and just touch you and send his Holy Spirit to comfort you, he will do it. You can't see him, but you can feel him. See, the problem is we want everything in our microwave society. We want it like yesterday. Everything is not going to happen suddenly. Sometimes we got to suffer a little bit because it gives us a testimony. It, get, it tests our faith. You all, this whole thing, when we go through bad times, it is a test of your faith. If you claim to trust God, don't you think he gonna, he's going to test you? 
He is. But the test is not just for you. The test is to give you the testimony. Because when you have gone through something and God has brought you through, y'all should be running around like crazy, thanking God that he brought you through another valley. That he kept you, that he protected you, that he comforted you, that he never left you. He was right there. Amen. So don't fear evil. What is evil? Evil are all the forces of darkness combined collectively. Satan, his demons, anything of darkness, anything that is contradicting what God stands for. That's evil. You don't have any reason to fear it because if you are truly saved, meaning that you know without a shadow of a doubt that God, his Holy Spirit resides in you, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are saved. Amen. If you have been saved, you have dominion over this earth. Your words have power. That means that you can speak against that thing when it comes up against you. See, y'all don't understand. I was speaking against COVID. The doctor saw me that night in the emergency room before they took me to my regular room. And he was trying to figure out how I was still here. My breathing, my oxygen was less than 70%. You dangerous when it get is it started getting dangerous when you below 90. I was below 70. I ain't gonna tell y'all the number because it'll probably scare some of y'all to death, but I was well below 70. When I posted that video, and I'm gonna tell y'all, I don't even remember making that video. But the video had over 500 views because I needed people to see that COVID was real, but I really don't remember making it. Okay. But God was right there with me. I felt the Holy Spirit right there with me. I was seeing angels and demons fighting all around my head. Y'all, I'm here to tell you, we truly struggle not against flesh and blood, but principalities. We say that, but we don't realize the spiritual war that is constantly going on for our souls. The devil is mad and he knows he's running out of time and he is trying his best to get as many souls as he can. But even with that, we have a great comforter. We have the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh, and Jesus Christ on our side. Amen. So you have nothing to fear. Don't sit back wondering, worrying, fearful. You can't be a child of God and be fearful. Speak what it is that you want to happen. Have faith that it is already done. Know in your spirit without a shadow of a doubt that God is still on the throne. We have to go through what we go through. But guess what? We already know the end of the story. Do we not? We know the end. We know who's already won. We serve a God that has already given us the ending of the story. He's won. Not the forces of darkness. Not the devil. God has won this war. Amen. Amen. Yes. Do not fear. That is it. That is your title for the day. Do not fear for he is with you. His rod and staff comfort you. Amen. Amen. It may be somebody on the conference line today or somebody out there who has not accepted Jesus. He's tugging on your heart, y'all. Let me tell you something. Stuff happens real fast. It does not take but a second for something to happen. Yeah. You hear one minute and you gone next. First day back at work, I got an email and the email was sent out about one of our 18-year-old students. And they were saying how 
He had just passed one of his sections of the GED and how nice he was. And he was looking forward to finishing up the other parts of his GED. He left campus and they never saw him again because guess why? That brother got killed in a car accident. Y'all, 18 years old and he's gone. And we hear stories like this every day. Well, time is not guaranteed to any of us. So you have right now, this moment right now, if you're not saved, you can be saved. And it's simple. All you have to do first is confess your sins and then ask God to forgive you and then believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ was sent here as the son of God crucified for you it's a personal thing see god is so um, omnipotent he's big enough to cover each and last person on this earth and i know that's a hard concept to grasp because we know how many people on this earth he's just that big but yet that powerful that omnipotent to where he loves and cares about each and every last one of us. Amen. So if you want to be saved today, all you have to do are those steps that I just said, and you're saved. Get ready for the fight, though, because when you accept Jesus, that's when the devil going to come after you. <laughs> you need to align yourself with something, a church that can cover you, that can pray for you, not just in a church. You want to align yourself with a church that is teaching the word of God so that you can grow, so that you can press on and get through this life the best that you can, but encouraged. Amen. You may have strayed away from God. You may have once been saved and you know you left him, but you want to come back. It's not too late. You can do that today. You can do it right where you are from the comfort of your home. You can always come back to him because he loves us. And he just wants us to love him. So you have time to come back. Amen. If you want to join the Georgetown Circuit, for those of you who may be watching the video later and don't know where the Georgetown Circuit is, it is in Georgetown, Georgia, which is right across the bridge from Eufaula, Alabama. God has given me a vision that this church is going to grow and it is going to be a virtual church. We will have members that we already have members in Ohio, but we will have members in other states. Because one thing, like I said from the beginning, why I talked to many pastors who were worried when the pandemic hit, what is going to happen to my church? And I said, this pandemic was really a blessing in disguise. You don't even realize it. You have the opportunity to reach so many people through technology. So if you want to partner with us or join us, reach out to us. We are on Facebook. You can send me a message, a text message. Call me if you have my phone number. Hey, Georgetown Circuit, that's our page on Facebook. Amen. So you can send me a message if you want to join the Georgetown Circuit. Because one thing I have to say, Reverend Bridget three weeks ago is not the same Reverend Bridget you got today. Because I saw a glimpse of heaven. I saw Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, he is real. Heaven is real. And he wants us there with him. As bad as I hate to say this this morning, I did not want to come back. Because what I saw was so beautiful. And so peaceful. And full of so much love. But he told me I had to come back. So I'm here. He told me I had work to do. So I'm here. So if you want to be saved, if you want to come back to him, if you want to join us, we are here. We are a loving church and would love to have you. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, most gracious God in heaven, we thank you this morning, Lord, for being who you are, God. Lord, we thank you for the people on the conference line. We thank you for the people that will see the video. Lord, we just ask you to bless each and every last person. Lord, I pray not just for the Georgetown circuit this morning, but Lord, I pray for this world right now, God. There are things that are going on that we know of and plenty of things that we don't know of. But God, we just ask you to help us not be fearful. Help us to trust you. Help us to remember that you are always with us, not only in the good times, but you are with us in the bad times. And we thank you, God, for never leaving us. We thank you, God, for being a good God to each and every last one of us. We thank you this morning. Thank you so much, God, for loving us, taking care of us, and providing for us our daily bread. Help us to remember that you're good and that we need to have a spirit of thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. So we say thank you. Hallelujah. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.